everybody, this is Glenda with Freylands and Friends Crafts Plus. I'm also going to talk about the fact that I am bipolar and how I have adapted and learned coping skills. So we'll be back in a minute and we'll talk about kind of both, especially where they kind of run together because pretty much everything in your health tends to run together. I have learned to focus on things like crafts. Now, when I first started these videos, I couldn't hardly draw a straight line. Still can't, but I'm a much better artist than I used to be. I, I have to have a ruler. <laughs> I can't freehand a straight line. I don't stop the shaking. I mean, that's, that's something that comes from the family. So I don't have to take... <laughs> that's not medicine. <coughs> that's just something that comes from my family. Now, there is medicine I'm on that does help to slow it down. And that that's pleasing because the more tired and the older I get, it's hurt. <laughs> but that's just something to laugh at because it is a part of my life and I learn to get around it when I can. <laughs> now, when I was diagnosed with COPD, I knew it was coming. My doctor had warned me it was there long before I was, it got to the point that it is now. I've been on continuous oxygen to, since 2006. And I live with it. I don't die with it. I live with it. <laughs> so just sitting down and just trying crafts and doing really simple, simple things. Over time, I just kept getting better. And now writing, I knew I could do that. And I, all my life, people had talked about how, how good I could write. And with a little training and a little research and, and that, I think I'm a pretty darn good writer. And, but I can only do so much of that on videos. Now, if you did not hear this last story that I did, a short story, it was really fun, really cute, set in Peru in the Amazon, which, of course, I don't know a lot about, but I had a lot of fun learning to pronounce the word Iquitos, which is the name of a city on the Amazon. <laughs> Just a joke. But those things are fun. Do things that you find interesting and fun. And so the crafts have helped. I've been, I've known how to crochet for years. I go in spurts on that. Last year I crocheted all my kids and grandkids stocking caps for Christmas. Um, I've done one Afghan this year. I, Partly done with another one, and then uh, we had had something had people coming over or so, so I had to bag it up and get it out of sight so that the kids didn't get into it, and it's still in the bag. <laughs> so you have to laugh at yourself. You really need to learn to laugh at yourself. Laugh at your weaknesses as well as your strengths. I'm not meaning like make fun of yourself, but the ability to laugh at yourself and see the actual humor in it. I'm not talking about putting yourself down. I've done that a lot in my lifetime. I was so ugly the whole time I was a child. I was so ugly. If I showed you my childhood pictures now, you'd think, oh, she's a cute kid. Not then. I didn't think so. I thought I was the ugliest thing they hit the earth. 
if your mood's ugly, you kind of feel you're ugly, I guess. Anyway, I'm, I, I'm not a professional, except that I have lived it. And if whatever happens in life, yes, it can throw you back into depression. And I'm not going to say that I didn't have some depressed moments when I find, when I had to go on oxygen and all of that, but I knew I couldn't let myself get into that deep tunnel again. There's an advertisement on TV and this woman, there's this picture, it's about bipolar depression and how there's, they're holding these pictures that display how they felt, how their emotions were. There's this one of this woman walking down a pair, walking down stairs into an emptiness. I mean, the stairs just go into shadow and then the darker shadow and then into dark. And it's like, okay, you hope the stairs are still there. And that there's a floor at the bottom. But you can't see it. And stairs, you can always walk back up them. But what if there's no bottom? That was my tunnel. That's the one I related to, was that picture. And I told my husband, I said, that's where I was. There were others, you know, like screaming into a pillow, this and that, and or hiding your face. But at that point in my life, that's not where I was. I was in a hole, and or a tunnel. I was in a dark place, <laughs> in other words. And I kept heading darker and darker, and I thought I'd never be able to get out of it, but I did. It took a lot of help, it took a lot of support, and it took medication. Once I got back up out of that tunnel, that really bad, bad deep one. I swore I was going to do anything not to go back there. Now I did go through depressions after that until everything, until I got regulated, but nothing so severe as that. So there are things you can do for yourself. Find what helps you cope. And you know, if it's writing a letter to a friend, if it's calling a friend. Now don't hide when you're depressed. I wanted to hide. When I was depressed and anxious, I didn't want anybody to see me. But that's the worst time to hide. That's why coming out here is so important to me. Oh, it must have just clouded over. Well, it's only partly cloudy. The temperature's just dropped by about 10 degrees in here. <laughs> it feels so much better. <laughs> so, it's it's a balance, and it takes time. I'm a lucky one. I know that I'm one of the lucky ones. But I pray that you can be too. And a lot of that is your job. I didn't like that idea at first because I didn't feel like doing anything. It's like, come on, do something, give me a push. One thing that hurt me really badly was I could not pray. Oh, I could utter some words, and I know God would hear them, but to me it felt like they stopped here, and they never made it up, and never made it back, and the answers never made it down. Because that's just where I was in the dark. I, that block was here. The block wasn't coming from there. I had to, but once, so I had to ask my pastor and dear friends and my husband to please pray for me. And finally I got to the point where I was allowing myself to, I, I don't pray in tongues. That's, some people do, that's great. But I don't. And... But 
I would say, Jesus, please give me the words to pray. And then I would hear myself praying, and it would be about the things that were important for me to pray about. So I knew he was answering my prayers. He had been all along, and I know his angels were guarding me. So, otherwise, I may not have known to go to the hospital when I did. <laughs> I might have just let myself sink into that deep, deep, deep well. That's about all. I've, I've run over time. I know I have. But that's about it for tonight. Whatever you have in your life, it may not be bipolar, it may not be COPD, it may be cancer that has followed you, you know, have been recurrent, but somehow each time you've beaten it or seem to have beaten it, it may be something else. Keep yourself as positive as possible. I can't say that you're never going to feel bad, that you're never going to cry. You will let yourself go through that, but not more than a short time. And then start thinking of your relaxation or meditation and let that start bringing you up. And counsel if you need to. I, I'm back in a little bit of therapy now, it's through my insurance, so it's, it's kind of like something that was offered, and so I thought, why not? It's been a while. I mean, I still see the psychiatrist and get medication checks and stuff, but as far as being actually in a regular counseling, my, I, I th I'm one of, probably one of the luckiest people in the world when it comes to this disease, and it is a disease. It is not just some emotional conflict. People have those. This is a chemical imbalance in the brain. That's what the medication is for, to help balance it. I love all of you. I hope I've said something that's been helpful, and if you need to share something, feel free to share. My email address is in the description if you'd rather email me and not be public about it. I understand that. It's got stigma attached to it. And I, I deal with the stigma. And a lot of time I just, I either don't put myself in a place where I'm going to get that nonsense. Or if I do get it, it's like, okay, they got a problem. Because the medical, American Medical Association now does recognize, and has for the last several years, recognized that it is a medical issue. Isn't that wonderful? So, neighbor pulled up. I love you. Talk to you on Monday. So... Have a good weekend. I love you. Smile and wave at somebody. Smiling helps your mood.